There's been a sharp rise in children refusing to go to school. They're not sick, they're not just skipping class, there is a lot more to this story. The problem is now so big that it's prompted a parliamentary inquiry and now the results are in. So let's bring in the Director of Melbourne's School Refusal Clinic, John Chalou in Melbourne. Good morning to you, John. Can you explain to us what is school refusal? How is it different to, you know, just skipping school and why is it happening more often? Well, school refusal, sometimes known as school can't, uh, is reluctance to go to school because of social, emotional and behavioural reasons, usually high anxiety. So kids who really want to go but find it really distressing to walk into that school gate and back into the classroom. And it's really tough for parents to deal with as well. What did this Senate inquiry find? Well, it really has redefined what school refusal is and explained what it is and are really taking the issue very seriously as a national mm. crisis. They're saying it's trauma informed and that there needs to be more resources, uh, more early detection, there needs to be um, more family friendly approaches from schools to home mm. uh, and more funding through Medicare so that more sessions are available, particularly for families who struggle to afford to get treatment. You hear of parents tearing their hair out because they see how, how traumatised their children um, feel about going to school, but then the parents are worried about not only them missing the education, but having the authorities knocking on the door saying your kid's not attending school. Um, how have we been handling this as a society so far, do you think? Well, I think, well, school refusal's been a, a problem for quite a long time. It's now on steroids since mm. COVID. Uh, and I think everybody's struggling with it to understand it to really see it as a behavior uh, not a behavioral problem but a, a it's it's a symptom informed by emotional social distress and the school refusal is a response to that mm. so i think uh, what we need to do is try to understand the reasons find solutions and work collabor collaboratively together with our children with the parents and schools and try to come up with a, mm. a graduated return to school plans that really helps our kids re-engage. So, so for parents who are sitting at home watching this, um, what advice would you have for them? I would say try and keep calm, work uh, together as a parenting team, assuming there's two parents at home, there's a lot of single mums out there really struggling. I would say try to get your child to talk and explain what the, the causes of their big feelings are and then try to come up with, uh, we'll get them outside for a start, try to get their routines in place, particularly mm. sleep and screens, and then talk to the school, seek information, get help, and a bit of prayer might go a long way. <laughs> it's a very <laughs> difficult problem. It, it sure is. John, thank you so much for your time this morning. Clint. My pleasure. In the latest surge of youth crime across Melbourne, concerned parents are contemplating pulling their children out of a school in the city's north after armed intruders stormed the campus. Nine's Elizabeth Moss is following the story in Melbourne. Lizzie, a manhunt is underway this morning. Good morning to you, Sophie. Yeah, police have not made any arrests thus far. This would have been an absolutely terrifying incident for the students, but also the teachers at Epping Secondary College. Police say two armed men believed to be former students at the school stormed the campus, sending the school into lockdown. It's believed they had previously had altercations with a group of boys at that school. Now, teachers stepped in trying to disarm these men, uh, but unfortunately, a fight a brawl broke out and one student was injured. Incredibly concerning. We know the number of children committing crimes has close to doubled in the past year. Yesterday in Melbourne's West, a family held an anti-violence rally after their young son was stabbed in an unrelated and unprovoked attack. They want this violence to stop. How many more lives needs to be affected for government to change the law? And that is why, as we have said, Sophie, some uh, parents are contemplating taking their kids out of some of these schools. They do not want their children to be at risk, and understandably so. Yep, you can't blame them. Lizzie, thank you.